On this hunt, I'm hanging out in Virginia's Shenandoah Valley with my longtime buddy, Ronnie Bain. Ron, you missed him. I missed him clean. I was shooting at his tail. It's the opener of dove season, which means good friends, good food, and more shotgun shells than you'd like to admit. I had to hurry because I knew Ron was trying to poach my <laughs> man. It's a rain in lead. Ooh. I'm Steven Ronella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. The coolest thing about shotguns is how inherently versatile they are. In a given year, an enterprising hunter might use his or her shotgun to hunt everything from morning doves weighing five ounces up to whitetails topping out at 200 pounds. If you wanted that level of versatility out of your rifle, you'd have to find one that was ideal for everything from squirrels to moose. And trust me, it doesn't exist. So it's easy to see why someone could get carried away with shotguns, just like how big game hunters get all excited and persnickety about long range rifles or archery equipment. My buddy Ronnie Bame has the shotgun bug and he's got it bad. It's all part of a general bird hunting fanaticism that keeps him busy breeding bird dogs, driving around the country in search of the next big covey, and not only loading his own shells for an old 16 gauge he's in love with, but actually doing it from scratch. Ron, do you shoot 16 gauges just to be like a contrarian? I think it's more romance because that was like the gauge back in the day. Everybody, oh, really? It was? Everybody loved a 16. And I like collecting old guns. Yeah. And you find a lot of old, cool guns that don't cost a lot of money in 16 gauge. What the gauges mean is, 12 gauge means that it would take 12 lead spheres of the diameter of a 12 gauge shotgun to make a pound of weight. Most companies making shotguns now are not making 16s. Right. They're making 12s and 20s. Right. So Ron is not just going to reload his own shotgun ammo. He's going to make his own shot. Like he's going to make the, the projectiles. And I think that you probably more than anything like to load your own ammo because it's fun to mess. You like it to is. mess with stuff. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, you could sit inside and watch TV or you could be outside and breathe lead. Breathe lead poisoning. <laughs> yeah. These ain't just any old shells. These are for a hotly anticipated annual event, Virginia's Dove Opener. She's still rolling good? Oh yeah, you're spitting out ammo. I see some offside shot rolling. Well, we're gonna see a lot of that. Dove hunting is full of tradition and dripping with formality. Guys will shoot the same dove field with the same group of friends and family year after year, often with their own procedures and sets of rules that go above and beyond those laid out by the actual law. It's enough excitement to warrant Ronnie breaking out a classic firearm and some hand-loaded shells. Unlike Ronnie, I've never been on a real dove hunt. Where I grew up, dove hunting has always been illegal for ridiculous and unscientific reasons that bring me more than a little shame as a native Michigander. So when Ronnie invited me to his place in Virginia's Shenandoah Valley to take part in the annual event known as a dove shoot, I couldn't turn him down. We're two days out, so in the meantime, I figure I should brush up on my wing shooting skills by visiting Ronnie's friend Andy Tubbs, an English emigre who runs a shotgunning school called the Glorious Twelfth. The name of your place, the Glorious Twelfth, is it like opening day of grouse? That's correct. In England? It's the 12th of August. They never change it. It never changes. 12th of August, everybody gets out, blows the cobs out the gun, they go shooting, and then they come and see me because they've not hit anything. So let's say a fellow like me comes to you and he says, he hits some stuff, but a lot of times he just knows that there must be something wrong with his shotgun. Because how could I have missed? 
Well, the first thing I like to do is start out with a gun fit. Yeah. We need to make sure it's pointing where we're looking. If it's not doing that, we're not going to hit things. We have a standard gun off the shelf. And we're just going to put a flag in so people can see that it's, it's not loaded, so the flag's out there. What I like you to do, Steve, is just mount it up and point straight down there so we can get a shot. Now, I can see that what I'm looking down is the rib straight into the eyeball. So I look in that, and the cast is very good for you. That is spot on. Really? I would not mess with that gun. OK, what you do is close the eyes for me. Just close your eyes. I'm going to pop a little magnet on the uh, back of the stock. Now open your eyes. Now tell me the relationship of that magnet to the front post. Totally blocking it out. OK. Right, so now I want you to mount the gun and close your left eye. OK, just, we're just going to show what would happen. OK, oh. off. OK, so now if I put this magnet on now, it's not lined up, is it? No, but the bead's on target. Yes, because, you, because, you, yeah. because you're just pointing this. Where they but actually, I'd actually blow that van's tail uh, headlight out. So basically, yeah. what the barrel, you're actually pushing the barrel because it's pulling the barrel to the, that eye. All right, what's next? Shoot. Let's go and shoot. Right. Or send you to Catholic school so you become right-handed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do the shoot. I'll admit to being somewhat of a hack with a shotgun. As a kid, my training for my old man amounted to showing me where the trigger and the safety were, and then you just kind of figured it out on your own. I can put all man or edible birds down on the ground, but my form ain't pretty, and I'm often a bit flabbergasted as to how I could muff shots that seem too easy to miss. Especially whatever keeps me from hitting those classically tough crossing shots on doves that come in low, fast, and too close. I'm curious to see if Andy can find my bad habits and point them out to me. So we want one fluid action after that bird as we mount. We don't want to be you yeah. want to flow after it. Think of it like overtaking a car. Conditions are good. We've put enough acceleration on to pass it. Do we look at our speedo? No. You've got to gauge to how much gas we need to go past it. Yeah. That's what we're doing here. OK, here it comes. Right, increase your lead. Whatever you're noticing, double it. OK, double your lead. So I, I still, oh, so I double you my lead. You slowed down tomorrow. You were so pleased you caught the bird. Yeah. You slowed the gun down. Double your lead. No, a little bit low, a little bit low, a little bit behind. You're, you're putting the barrel down, you're seesawing the why, barrel. Why am I doing that? Because you're looking for the results. I'm like, did I get it? <laughs> That's it. Behind it? Yeah, you're, you're a long way behind it. Really? Treble it. Right, you're still behind. You think so? I want you to miss it in front. Come on, miss it in front. I'll scrape the paint off the front of it. Smooth. Oh, yeah, you're right. So you can't follow instructions. I said, miss it in front. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would never. Well, I, don't, it just, I don't anticipate that lead being but that But that's much. the lead. Now we found it once. Let's do it again. Better. A little bit high. Swing slightly low, and we're there. Outstanding. I'll give you a gold star. For oh, that. really? Yes, definitely. You think you learned something? Yeah, definitely. Growing up, man, we'd throw a couple of clay pigeons, and that'd be all the training you ever had, since I've never had an ounce of formal instruction. So if nothing else, I have a vocabulary now for my frustration. The more you work at it, the more it's going to break down. It's just like pointing at a light switch. You don't think about it. You point at a light switch and flick it off. Yeah. This is just an extension of your body. If you remember that and don't pre-plan anything, it will flow. Thanks, though. This is fun. The next morning, we decide to put that practice to use. We're still a day out from opening day for morning doves, but street pigeons, AKA Eurasian rock doves, are fair game. Doing it better, you hit your call. <laughs> now, if an alien came down from outer space, he could be excused for thinking that pigeon hunting and dove hunting are similar. You've got shotguns, grain fields, smallish birds, but where hunting doves is a relatively formal affair, hunting non native, deleterious, and completely unprotected street pigeons is rogue and rascally. No closed seasons, no bag limits, no competition. If dove hunting is communion, pigeon hunting is getting drunk in a bar. You take the lead one, Steve. 
now. Oh, I got that oh, one. You got that one. <laughs> nice job. We got to go do a little gather up now. Missed him. I missed him clean. I was shooting at his tail. I'll tell you what's wrong. You're like Mr. Like old timey shotgun, know, old timey gauge. This thing swings like a fence post. Well, why in the world, after all that, because, why in the world would you come out with a high flute and new shotgun? Because if pigeons did come in like crazy, I wanted three shots. I can't help them. I did. There you go. Oh. All right. You good? Let's pick up shells. It's opening day of dove season. Legally, you can't hunt till noon, but the farmer who owns the field will be shooting goes one better and pushes his official start to 1 p.m., which gives a little extra breeding room to a hunt day that already seems a tad bit relaxed. But we're soaking up the southern love for tradition by joining our friend Chip Parkins for a home-cooked breakfast in a farmhouse that his great-great-great-grandfather built during the presidency of James Madison. Has it always been dove hunts around opening day? Oh, yeah. The opening day dove season is always a big event. Mm -hmm. But has it always been that people would have, like, a field and invite friends and... Well, typically, the more people you have in a dove field, the more shots you get, and it keeps the birds up in the air. Because if you're just one person standing in the field... They'll sit out there and walk yeah. around. Yeah. Oh, I got you. So, so it actually benefits your hunt to have right. a bunch of people show up. Yeah, you want the field surrounded, so, you know... When you miss and he flies to me, I can get him. Yeah, it's like with duck hunting, keeping him up. Yeah. If not, you just like, eventually, you got your little spot, <clears throat> and there's no ducks there, but they're all... Over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then they, and then they keep going over there. Yeah. So that's part of the thinking on having, like, the big gangs of people. And, and it's hunting. like a family thing, too. Family yeah. and friends. Yeah. Well, you know, it was like Michigan deer season. Real social. Real social thing. How and many he... years have you been hunting the field we're going to go hunt today? Three, five. Oh, okay. I hope we're as lucky as we've been in the past. They've cut a lot of corn this year, so there's more feed out. More competition. Yeah. yeah. But historically, they know where Johnny's sunflower seeds are. Yeah. I'm worried about getting, uh, that's a lot of people shooting in one field. Well, the rule is you got to have sky underneath your barrel. Gotcha. You're going to get peppered. You're going to get hit. Yeah, with down, stuff yeah. coming down. Yeah, or, that don't bother me. But typically, you can hear the first couple, and then you just duck your head and... Yeah. Shots yeah, it's kind of like hearing them first raindrops on a roof. Yeah. No, I, I'm familiar with that. You know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, there but it's be not more. something you got to pick out. No, I've never. <laughs> no. We gotta get some stuff for it. I gotta get dogs, water, right. shells. I'm nervous. So you haven't dove hunted before? I dove hunted, but I never dove hunted like in a formal dove hunting like, situation. Really? I hunted doves in Montana. I've hunted doves here oh. and there, but just opportunistic, like, oh, there's some doves. They're in right. Let's go try to get one. I've never been out where there's like a meeting time and whistle blowing and safety briefings and it's it's a well-run operation. I'm excited. And here are Ronnie's pride and joy. Bravo. Kind of the most beautiful, ugliest dogs you'll ever meet, Rocco Italianos. That's not Kennel. If you don't like seeing other trucks at your hunting spot, steer clear of Virginia dove hunts. At a hot field, it's a never-ending procession of rigs, hunters, and handshakes, all gearing up to hit that 15-bird bag limit. The rules of the farm are safety. Absolutely. There's enough birds around here to just watch where you're shooting. The second rule is pick up your grass. Third, don't clean any birds in the field. Clean them up here so my dog won't eat them. We aren't going to do any shooting when you walk in until Ron shoots. When he shoots, we we'll probably know everybody's in position. So, so the first shot you hear is like, go for it after you hear the first shot. We'll ju I'll just fire a shot in the air, and, and then we'll have some fun. Yep, ready? Yeah. That's 
it. Steve, I gotta go over here and look for a bird. If your dog can't find it, I'll find it. Good girl, Artie. Come on, baby. Come on, hurry up. There we go. Nice. Here we go. Steve. Did you shoot? Yeah, I got him. I shot two. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see who he brings it back to. <laughs> Here, puppy. Here, pup. All right, we'll do forensics on this one, because you know Beer Mountain shot is yeah. not round. If it's got a big oblong hunk of lead in it, we'll <laughs> <host you. laughs> Oh, God. Got stung. Oh. No, Rob. Oh, sh wasted my. Come on, Stevie. Coming to Chip. Yep. Nice, Chip. Think. I think there's a lot of doves in that man's field. This is the hunt that people who don't want to be uncomfortable and that just want to have a ton of action ought to be going on. Yeah. That was a blast, man. Yeah, I can't wait to eat them things. We're back at Ronnie's place, known as Beer Mountain, preparing to cook up a pigeon and dove feast. You get sick of plucking after a while? I get sick of Start plucking on pluck. the first bird. You get sick of plucking right away. <laughs> but there's no easier bird to pluck than a dove. Chip, what's going on? Just decided to join the cleaning party. You know, a day in the heat. Thanks for coming over to help us with this tedious task. I would venture to say that more pounds of dove meat <laughs> will be prepared in this way than all other dove recipes combined. But it's probably like one of the crowd pleasingest ways to cook right. bird like, meat. You can like talk anybody into trying a popper because it sounds like something you're getting at a restaurant. Exactly. You know, it's like, oh, I love poppers. But on the pigeon, you really got, you really got to do something to it because, you know, they're a well-exercised bird, man. Right. I do a lot of flying, you know. That looks good, man. You look like a damn sushi chef. So now you're going to wrap them up in some bacon, huh? Right. right. I like the thinner bacon for it because you can usually stretch it a little bit and you get around, get around. There was a time some years ago when Wild Game cooking, it was like dudes that like Wild Game discovered bacon a decade ago. Bacon. Everything was bacon. Yeah. But you can't really argue that it's just like good. Those are pretty. Thank you, Steve. I'm going to grill some of those dove halves and some of the pigeon halves, and I'm going to mix the sauce up. The main liquid there is white wine, a little bit of honey, olive oil. You got some hot peppers, garlic, minced rosemary, salt, and paprika. You just want to blend it into a paste or a smooth. Our third and final preparation is my favorite. You've heard of deep fried turkey? Well, this is the appetizer version. Whole plucked birds dusted and seasoned to cornmeal and then lightly fried. It's mind bogglingly good.
Okay, fellas. Oh, wow. That was, that was very good. Delicious. It's amazing. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that most folks get drawn heavier into their traditions as they get older. In a change in world, traditions are our fortified bunkers. Personally, though, I'm of the opposite mindset in many ways. I try to avoid the trap of doing things just because that's what we do. I want to make all my decisions from a fresh perspective every time. But I'm thinking this whole dove hunting situation could be an exception. It was very good. It took us almost as long to make all this food as it did to shoot them all day yesterday. <laughs> 10, 20, 50 years from now, I cannot imagine myself feeling any diminished levels of excitement about food, fun, laughs, hey and shooting. Cheers. That's a recipe that is gonna keep me coming back for more and more helpings. Mm -hmm.